Once again, good morning and welcome. Today, we pay special tribute as the command of United States Africa Command is transferred from General Thomas D. Waldhauser to General Stephen J. Townsend. At this time, we would like to recognize some of the many distinguished visitors in attendance today. Representing the Lord Mayor and City of Stuttgart, Mayor Dr. Martin Shira. Lord Mayor Roland Klink, Lord Mayor of Leinfelden, Echterdingen. Ambassador Andrew Young, U.S. Ambassador to Burkina Faso. The Honorable Carlos Medina Drescher, Consul General for Spain. The Honorable Erkan Mehmet Oner, Consul General for Turkey. Ms. Michelle Lenahan, Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for African Affairs, Office of the Secretary of Defense. Mr. Youssef Patrick, Deputy Director for Operations, the International Committee of the Red Cross. General Todd W. Walters, Commander, Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe and U.S. European Command. Fleet Command Master Chief Crispian Addington, Senior Enlisted Leader, U.S. European Command. General Jeffrey Harigian, Commander, U.S. Air Forces Africa. Chief Master Sergeant Brian Blaze, Command Chief Master Sergeant, U.S. Air Forces Africa. Lieutenant General James Vetchery, Deputy to the Commander for Military Operations, U.S. Africa Command. Lieutenant General Stephen Twitty, Deputy Commander, U.S. European Command. Admiral Rob Bauer, Chief of Defense, the Netherlands. General de Division Guy Blanchard Akoy, Chief of Defense for the Republic of Congo. General Sheikh Gay, Chief of Defense for Senegal. General Gabriel Olena Shakin, Chief of Defense for Nigeria. Vice Admiral Iselku El Welly, Deputy Chief of the Armed Forces General Staff, Mauritania. Lieutenant General Dimitru Scarlat, Romania. Major General Giovanni Magnone, European Union Military Staff. Major General Sharif Zarad, representing the Algerian National People's Army. Brigadier General Tahir Ali Mohammed, Deputy Chief of Defense for Djibouti. Participating in today's review from left to right is the United States Army Europe Band under the direction of their commander, Major Randall Bartel, and drum major, Staff Sergeant Joseph Grable. Elements of United States Africa Command include United States Army Africa, led by Colonel Gretchen Nunez. United States Marine Forces Africa, led by Colonel John Hetland. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements in a military unit, as members kept their position in formation by dressing on the colors. At the center of today's formation, and bearing the national colors, is the United States Africa Command's Joint Color Guard, led by Sergeant First Class David Reeves. United States Naval Forces Africa, led by Captain Aaron Hoff. United States Air Forces Africa, led by Colonel James Donaldson. United States Special Operations Command Africa, led by Colonel Jason Schmidt. and combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa, led by Colonel Lisa Lamb. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Major General Todd B. McCaffrey, Chief of Staff, 
United States Africa Command. Accompanying him today from the staff directors are Colonel Fran Hardison, J-1, Brigadier General Greg Hatfield, Deputy J-2, Major General Greg Olson, J-3, and Colonel Matthew Rudy, Deputy J-4. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the official party for today's ceremony, General Thomas D. Waldhauser, United States Africa Command Outgoing Commander, accompanied by General Stephen J. Townsend, the incoming commander, and our host for today's ceremony, the Honorable Richard V. Spencer, performing the duties of the Deputy Secretary of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as honors are rendered. Then remain standing for the invocation offered by Chaplain Colonel Jack Stummy, United States Africa Command Chaplain. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, thank you for this day. Those before us and the many they represent who have answered the call to guard our freedoms and promote its blessings on the African continent. Lord, thank you for General Waldhauser, his leadership within this command, and his work among our African partners to deepen relationships that, this, that support the development of security and prosperity. And for General and Mrs. Waldhauser's modeling of service values, and genuine care to this command and the Stuttgart community. As they depart from us, please bless them and may their hearts clearly hear your words of well done, good, and faithful servants. Father, we thank you for bringing General and Mrs. Townsend to lead the AFRICOM family. Guide General Townsend with your wisdom and give him insight and discernment to meet the challenges of command with success. And please bless Mrs. Townsend with joy and much friendship as she supports our AFRICOM family and is a friend to many. Finally, please provide your favor on the AFRICOM family, our African partners, our allies, and all those who with us love peace, liberty, and goodness. In your most holy name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Spouses play a very important role, not only in the successes of our service members, but also in the support of their families. At this time, Mrs. Waldhauser is being presented with a bouquet of flowers in appreciation for her dedication and support to the men and women of the United States Africa Command and their families, and for her many contributions to the various military and civilian groups and organizations in the Stuttgart community.
Also at this time, Mrs. Townsend is being presented with a bouquet of flowers, which signifies the trust and friendship that will develop with the members of the United States Africa Command and the Stuttgart community. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the Federal Republic of Germany and United States National Anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The change of commands. The change of command is a time honored tradition that runs deep in symbolism and heritage. In times past, the colors were the rallying point for troops in battle. In many ways, unit colors provide the same purpose today to draw service members together for common action. A unit relies upon the unity of its members for success, both in combat and peace. The colors are the visible symbol of that loyalty. The command senior enlisted leader is the custodian of the colors. When the colors are not displayed for the commander, they are under the care of the command senior enlisted leader. Today, Chief Master Sergeant Ramon Colon Lopez 
presents the colors to the commander for the last time. Attention to orders. Headquarters, United States Africa Command. Subject, assumption of command by assignment of the President of the United States of America. The undersigned assumes command of United States Africa Command. Effective July 26, 2019. Signed, Stephen J. Townsend. General, United States Army, commanding. Africom, at ease. Detachment, at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mr. Spencer. <clears throat> Good morning. I, uh, come here wearing the hat as the Deputy Secretary of Defense, and ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake that I will not dally, because if I take too much longer, you'll be stuck with the Secretary of the Navy. <laughs> I'd like to welcome our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, but most importantly, the men and women of the United States Africa Command. It truly is an honor for Polly and I to be here to mark the transfer of command from General Waldhauser to General Townsend. Thank you for joining us here today. We all know in our careers that we would not be where we are today without the support of our total family defined any way you want to take it. So what I'd like to say right now in general to everybody, take a moment and thank your families for the reason and the support that you are here doing what you're doing. To General Waldhauser and his family, starting with Gail, thank you for your steady support and, I'm sure, guidance along General Waldhauser's way over the past 40 years. 40 years. Without a doubt, he would not be here today if it were not for your many contributions throughout his highly successful career. And to their children, Amy, Kate, and Mark, although not here today, they also have sacrificed much along this journey, so we thank them for their service as well. And to General Townsend's family. First, his wife, Melissa. General Townsend's success is just a testament, not only to his own dedication, but to your dedication and your perseverance. So thank you for your unwavering support for his success and our entity's success. And to their two sons, Tyler, an Army captain, and Evan, a former soldier who served with the 75th Ranger Regiment. We appreciate your service to the nation as your father takes on this new challenging responsibility. I would also like to acknowledge the many leaders here representing the United States government interagency, our allies, and our regional partner, partners who are so very important and integral to the success of this unique command. Africa's challenges cannot be resolved through military force alone. We all know that, which is why AFRICOM is uniquely structured to capitalize on the strong network of diplomatic and development professionals who are here with us today and who are committed to the long-term success and long-term prosperity of the region. Your presence here today demonstrates a clear understanding that this command's mission is a combined effort in which all stakeholders have a part to play as we pursue a goal of a secure, stable, and prosperous Africa. Undoubtedly, when we work together as one team, we will attain these goals. So thank you for your shared commitment 
to AFRICOM's mission. With a geographic area three and a half times the size of the continental United States, encompassing 53 countries and 1.3 billion people, Africa Command's responsibilities are easily said to be enormous. 40% of Africa's population is under the age of 14, and by 2050, one out of four people on our planet will live in Africa. To say that we ask a lot of this team, ladies and gentlemen, is an understatement. If disenfranchisement, insecurity, and extremism flourish here, we can expect a very, very dangerous tomorrow, not only in Africa, but also in America, Europe, and across this world. Since 2008, when AFRICOM was first established, this command has worked close cooperation with African partners and international institutions such as the African Union and the UN to build partner capacity, enable economic development, and support effective governance. Throughout the past decade, however, the evolution of terrorist organizations and increased meddling by external actors has greatly altered Africa's security environment. In response, Africa Command, under the leadership of General Waldhauser, has skillfully adapted to meet the needs of the nation's strategic priorities. To anyone familiar with General Waldhauser's distinguished career, the accomplishments of his command under his watch should come as no surprise. A career infantry officer, he's excelled at every single level. As a colonel, he commanded the 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit, where, following September 11th terrorist attacks, he led Marines through combat operations in both Afghanistan and Iraq. As a flag officer, he continued to rise through the ranks, commanding the 1st Marine Division, the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, and the United States Marine Corps Forces Central Command. At each of these significant posts, General Waldhauser demonstrated his exceptional leadership, his unwavering, unwavering character, and his steadfast commitment to accomplishment of the mission. Throughout his more than four decades of service, and I'll underscore that again, ladies and gentlemen, four decades of service, he has gained the reputation of one of the most operationally competent leaders in the entire joint force. Since General Waldhauser took the helm here three years ago, Africa Command has made great strides in adapting to the ever-evolving strategic environment, which for those of you directly or indirectly involved, you know is no small feat. General, during your tenure, you aligned AFRICOM's mission with priorities of the national defense strategy. Through a strong network of partners, you helped to counter the influence of great power competitors such as China and Russia, who seek to engage on the continent for their own profit and do not pay attention to the well-being of many of the African peoples. By maintaining pressures on violent extremist organizations, you have created space for diplomatic efforts, which is so very vital to the future of this continent. And just in case that wasn't enough, you also managed the international health crisis in responding to outbreaks of Ebola. This command's focus on helping partner nations build professional militaries that support elected civilian authority and respect human rights has undoubtedly prevented crises that threaten both development, economic growth, and ultimately human lives. This is the quiet work that 80% of the AFRICOM team does 100% of the time. These daily efforts were present, which prevent the outbreak of conflict and chaos mark AFRICOM's great success. General Waldhauser, as you and Gail head to South Carolina for a well-deserved break, know that this command stands postured to continue success beyond your hard work and leadership. On behalf of the United States military and a grateful nation, thank you for your leadership in African command and your remarkable career of service. I'm confident that this is not the last we'll hear from you as you step out on chapter two of your life. As you retire your post, Rest assured, the men and women of this command, you are in great hands 
General Townsend brings a wealth of experience from his position as the former commander of Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve. General Townsend led the coalition's efforts to destroy the Atlantic State, the Atlantic, pardon me, the Islamic State's physical caliphate in both Iraq and Syria. He has served multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan and has extensive experience in developing the f fighting with partner forces. Most recently, he served as the commander of the U.S. Army's Training and Doctrine Command, where he made significant improvement in the Army's accession enterprise, oversaw the extension of infantry basic and advanced training, and was instrumental in the development of the multi-domain operations warfighting concept. General Townsend has a sterling reputation, and I am entirely confident AFRICOM will achieve even greater successes under his command. General, congratulations, and once again, thank you to you and your family. You're absolutely the right leader to take this command and this organization. Thank you for your continued service. In closing, I want to once again recognize the great soldiers, Marines, airmen, sailors, civilians of the African Command and tell you that what you do to strengthen security and promote stability throughout, the region, throughout this region is unequaled. The American people are exceptionally proud of your accomplishment as much as they are proud and want to extend that pride to your willingness to adapt and meet the demands of a very complex mission. Preserving peace throughout Africa is an enduring American interest. And this command serves as our nation's forward deployed guardians. Thank you for your willingness to stand the watch. May God bless the women and men of the AFRICOM command. May God bless our military and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, General Waldhauser. Thank you very much, Secretary Spencer, for those gracious remarks, and thank you for coming from Washington today to preside uh, over this change of command. We welcome you in Polly today. It's quite a warm day, but nonetheless, I'm sure, as you said, any day out of Washington probably is, is better regardless of the temperature uh, on the ground. <coughs> At the outset today, we uh, acknowledged our colleagues and our friends uh, and so what I would like to do based on the heat this morning is just go right to this at the onset. I want to thank, first of all, everybody who was involved with the ceremony today, the soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, and coast guardsmen who are on the field, the band, the protocol, the firing detail, and all of those who put together this command, change of command this morning. I want to thank you all, and I think we should all just give them a very big round of applause. Today's ceremony is about U.S. Africa Command and the recognition of this team's accomplishments in strengthening alliances and enhancing partner capabilities, maintaining the continuity of the command's young legacy, and expanding the confidence for it in the future. Over the past three years, AFRICOM adapted to the complex and uncertain security environment it faced and adjusted its approach within the context of a major change in national military strategy emphasizing great power competition for high-end combat operations. Across Africa, the security challenges are many, and malign influence and the confluence of illicit activity, environmental variance, extremism, and poor governments, governance are but a few of the factors that continue to fuel insecurity and disenfranchisement. Regardless of the challenges, the men and women of this command capitalized on opportunities working with our African and U.S. interagency colleagues in diplomacy, development, and defense to address the drivers of conflict and create opportunity for political resolution and economic growth on the African continent. The strong and trusting relationships built by AFRICOM's professionals increased American influence and ensured strategic access in order to accomplish U.S. national security objectives. Each and every day, nearly 7,000 deployed personnel displayed unwavering devotion to the mission, laboring tirelessly throughout the broad and diverse African continent. Together with our U.S. military service components and the National Guard State Partnership Program, 
AFRICOM executed a substantial number of operations, engagements, exercises, and security assistance events in building partner capacity, countering violent extremist organizations, and responding to crises. Our engagements went beyond military capabilities, focusing on professionalization concepts such as respect for the rule of law, human rights, and the integration of gender perspectives, values which create a security force people seek out rather than run away from. All these efforts are creating long-term impacts on the ability of our African partners to secure their own futures across the entirety of our area of responsibility. Our commitments in North Africa have enabled willing partners such as Morocco and Tunisia to integrate sophisticated U.S. security programs into their defense and intelligence institutions. Additionally, the cooperation and partnerships developed by the men and women of AFRICOM have assured U.S. access in the southern Mediterranean at a time characterized by increased destabilization in the region. In the coastal area of Libya, AFRICOM helped eradicate the terrorist sanctuary in CERT and subsequently went on to provide for follow-on counterterrorism operations and support to di di diplomatic activities that could bring a political resolution to that country. Today, however, the situation has changed in Libya, and at some point in the future, when it becomes appropriate, AFRICOM will work to provide military support that may be required to advance a political solution and resolve the roots of conflict inside Libya. In Somalia, the synchronization of our military activities with the federal government of Somalia, with our U.S. ambassador who is now permanently on the ground in Mogadishu, and the U.S. Agency for International Development generated a persistent pressure on al-Shabaab and ISIS while developing the capacity and confidence of the Somali National Army to assume responsibility for its own security. AFRICOM's bilateral engagements and investments with key regional partners, specifically Uganda and Kenya, are helping to improve the security forces anchoring the African Union mission in Somalia. Likewise, Ethiopian peace and reform initiatives offered us another opportunity to cooperate with a strong partner in addressing the security environment not only in Somalia, but across East Africa. These efforts created opportunity for the federal government to increase its legitimacy and implement reforms critical to its path forward on economic growth and stabilization. And we are seeing positive trends, such as the Somali National Army demonstrating capacity to secure and hold territory, while at the same time witnessing emerging economic growth and initiatives designed to relieve monetary debt and create jobs that will accelerate development. The incremental, incremental progress being made gives us reason to be optimistic while still remaining cautious, as these gains in Somalia are extremely fragile. But again, in Somalia there are gains nevertheless. In West Africa's Sahel, our men and women demonstrated the utmost professionalism and dedication to our overarching intelligence and partner-centric strategy to confront disparate groups with differing goals and objectives. Through bilateral engagements, intelligence operations, and logistical support to African-led, allied-assisted efforts, our partners are better empowered to combat insecurity and restore state authority. The effects have been rising demands for Western training of forces and increasing financial investment and security assistance from our European and international allies. Ultimately, the use of the military tool in West Africa creates an environment conducive for a whole of government and international actions to address the drivers of conflict and marginalization. Most importantly, the men and women of AFRICOM maintain the posture, agreements, and partnerships necessary for our ability to respond with agility and expedience to crisis and to protect U.S. personnel and facilities on the continent. No matter if it was in response to election violence in the Democratic Republic of the Congo or pro protest in Sudan, our interagency partners would be confident that AFRICOM would be there with them if required. Furthermore, this command leveraged resources and extensive networks to rapidly marshal aid and alleviate human suffering and to mitigate the devastating effects caused by natural disasters, such as tropical, 
tropical cyclone Edai in central Mozambique this past spring. These efforts not only saved lives and upheld our American values, but increased our influence and access necessary, again, to achieve the United States' strategic objectives. AFRICOM's success is not ours alone, as it takes teamwork and relationships to accomplish the mission, and there are many organizations and people to thank here today. But first and foremost, we honor the bravery and service and sacrifice of those American, African, and partner soldiers who gave their lives over the past three years in the noble pursuit of peace and security across the African continent. They will be in our prayers forever. To the service secretaries, the Department of Defense, the services, the Joint Staff, the Chairman of the, of the Joint Staff, thank you for your trust and confidence and unwavering support and flexibility towards AFRICOM. To my fellow service chiefs and fellow combatant commanders, represented by General Walters from UCOM, who's here today, you have been a great team to work with. To our ambassadors, as represented here today by Mr. Young, who represents all the ambassadors on the continent, and to our interagency partners, Thank you for your service on the front lines, which is pivotal to long-term success as it opens the doors for economic development and because, as the Secretary said, very few, if any, of Africa's challenges can be resolved through the use of military force alone. To our African partners and allies, thank you for your remarkable leadership and friendship, your strength and your action, and your shared commitments to develop prosperity on the continent. I also want to thank our component commanders and their staffs, the commander of Joint Task Force Horn of Africa, who all shouldered the majority of the efforts empowering our partners to counter their security threats. You have been great teams and great individuals to work with. To my two deputy commanders, Alex Lascaris and General Vetri, you were great advisors and dear friends who operationalized our strategic approach and advanced our U.S. interests in Africa. To the command senior listed advisor chief, Master Sergeant Colin Lopez, you demonstrated a wavering loyalty to the well-being of our personnel and elevated partner NCO development and professionalization programs on the continent to unparalleled levels. And through the directors and members of the AFRICOM staff whose dedication and competence enabled this command to make tremendous strides in the accomplishment of our camp campaign objectives, I offer my sincere gratitude and appreciation. Most importantly, thank you to the families who made the greatest sacrifices for our men and women to achieve so much success across the continent. And a special thanks to my wife, Gail, whose numerous engagements and support for the families here in Stuttgart and on the continent, were as, as well as her endeavors with the local community and the German groups, were truly remarkable and appreciated. Your efforts, Gail, were exemplary, and we all thank you very much. How about a hand for my wife? Thank you, thank you very much, Gail. And finally, to our German hosts and friends, not only for their partnership on the African continent, but for allowing AFRICOM service members and their families to call Germany home. It truly has been a warm and welcoming place to live and work. Now, let me welcome General Steve Townsend to AFRICOM and congratulate Steve on taking the command today. For nearly four decades, General Townsend has led and commanded at every echelon, and through his experience with multiple combatant commands and the Joint Staff, has developed the strategic vision and knowledge to lead AFRICOM's men and women in this very uncertain environment. Steve is a brilliant leader and experienced soldier, and the perfect fit for this command. Steve, I'm excited that you are taking the callers today, and I know you will thoroughly enjoy the opportunity and the challenge that you are about to face. So congratulations to you and a welcome also to your wife, Melissa, over there. I want to thank you guys for both coming here. You have great experience. I know you'll bring a wealth of knowledge and, and caring spirit to the command. Again, thank you. Welcome, both of you. And I'd like to have a hand for the Townsends. In closing, it has been my honor to serve as the commander of U.S. Africa Command, standing shoulder to shoulder with all of our personnel, colleagues, and partners. I am proud of the tremendous accomplishments over the past three years and in posturing this command to meet Africa's, Africa's current and future needs. I wish you all the best and, as our mission statement clearly articulates, continue to work with our partners to strengthen security forces, counter transnational threats, conduct crisis response in order to advance U.S. national interests and promote security, stability, and prosperity across the African continent. Semper Fidelis, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, General Townsend. Well, good morning. I was going to say what a beautiful day it is here in Stuttgart. I am impressed that you managed to bring weather that we would be used to in Virginia here to Stuttgart. Melissa and I would like to thank all of you for the very warm welcome you've extended to us. <laughs> Secretary Spencer, ambassadors, fellow general officers, especially those who are here from the African continent, um, and for my family that's traveled, some from the United States and some from here in Germany. Melissa and I have been wishing for an assignment in Germany for most of our career, and after 37 years, it's finally happened. During our brief time on the ground, we have already had a, wel a wonderful welcome from the AFRICOM and U.S. Army garrison teams here and from our very gracious German hosts. We can already tell it's going to be a great tour here. As I'm looking into this crowd, I see some old friends, some old battle buddies, wingmen and shipmates. I also see a bunch of new faces that represent important relationships that General Waldhauser talked about and the AFRICOM team has cultivated. And I look forward to calling all of you Freunde as well and soon. Thanks to all of you for coming to honor the Waldhauser service to the men and women of this command and to our nation. To our nation's leadership, to the President of the United States, the Secretary of Defense, and uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, I'm grateful and humbled for this incredible assignment, and by your trust and confidence, I will do my best. To the Waldhausers, to Tom and to Gail, thanks for your leadership and for your stewardship of AFRICOM. It has been apparent everywhere, and especially during the superb transition you have led for us. A personal thanks for that. Tom, as a Marine, you have seized the beachhead and given me an easy landing. And as a soldier, I'm happy to pass through your lines and continue the attack. I'm in awe of your tremendous career and service, of your leadership, of this joint command, and in your efforts to posture AFRICOM to best promote our nation's interest in a more secure, stable, and prosperous Africa. All of us here join in, th and join in thanking you for your 43 years of dedicated and superb service to our nation. All of us wish you and Gail the very best on your next adventure. Please join me in another round of applause for the Waldhausers. <laughs> to the service members, civilians, and families of AFRICOM, Melissa and I are honored to and excited to join your ranks. We thank you for the gracious welcome and the first class transition we've had so far. We look forward to serving with you and accomplishing AFRICOM's important mission for our nation. Together, we will protect our nation from threats abroad and ensure the U.S. and our allies remain the best partners in Africa now and in the future. To our partners and allies, both in Africa and Europe, AFRICOM is known for its diverse organization and partnerships. Having recently celebrated our 10th anniversary, we are a young command, but we are one with an important focus for our combined nations. I promise you, you can continue to count on AFRICOM to work side by side with you to advance our shared interests for security, stability, and prosperity across Africa. As the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. I look forward to going farther together with all of you. Thank you. Captain, attach hood. Africom, attach hood. Detachment, post. March. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please stand for the playing of the Armed Forces Medley. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain in place for the departure of the official party and our distinguished guest. Please say farewell to General and Mrs. Waldhauser at the reviewing stand as you exit today. Designated invited guests are reminded that the change of command reception will be held at the Schwaben Events Center. Shuttle vans located adjacent to the chapel are available to take invited guests to and from the reception. Thank you for your attendance and enjoy the rest of your day. Hello, sir.